Welcome back to another segment of Manifest with SI Power with your host Dwight. Hope everybody's doing wonderful out there. First thing I want to do is give gratitude. Thank you for joining the tribe and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for sharing the channel with others that may need the information. Thank you for liking and commenting on your favorite videos. And thank you all who are sending in the questions. I uh, really appreciate it, even though I'm kind of answering them indirectly to, to get you to continue to work and figure it out, put your puzzle together. Because remember, it's not cookie cutter. Um, the fun journey for each individual, there may be similarities, but there's nothing that's exactly the same. Um, someone asked the question, what was the question I wanted to answer? Maybe it'll come back to me, but this segment is going to be on manifestation. Okay. So we are all master manifestors. We're always manifesting. We're never not manifesting. The biggest question is, are you manifesting what you don't want? Or are you manifesting what you do desire? That's the question that each person has to ask themselves. Why do I say that we're always manifesting? Because manifesting is simple, right? Even to the point of going down to the refrigerator and getting your favorite beverage. Seven up orange juice, fruit punch, tea, whatever, you know, you like. That's manifesting. Because you thought about it and you had to put forth some action, right? Internal action or external action or both internal and external action to bring to fruition your desire. And so the same way you go get that drink is the same way you uh, attain, obtain, receive everything else, right? So how can you say that you're always manifesting? Well, let's think about it. You're always thinking, you're always feeling, you're always emotionalizing, you're always having self-talk, inner conversation, internal dialogue, conscious auto-suggestion, or telling a story inside your head. Um, you're always believing something. You're always perceiving something. It means you're imaging something. You're visualizing something. Uh, you're always expecting something. All right? You're always practicing repetition. Uh, that's your habit. And you're always expressing a behavior. And that leads you into action. And when you take an action or inaction, you produce a result, an outcome, a harvest, a yield. That's just what it is. So manifestation is not something new. It's something you're doing all the time. Whether you're doing it consciously or unconsciously, knowingly or unknowingly, you're always doing it. So I want to provide instructions on how to begin to obtain more favorable results. The first thing is you got to express exquisite clarity on what you want. Write it down. Right? When you write something down, it becomes real. That's why there's contracts. Okay? Then you have to begin to think in alignment with that, think in agreement with that, think congruently with that, think in harmony with that, and then be open to things that come to you, which will equate to inspired action. Like you may receive an instruction, you might get a flash in your head, or it just may be that you just know what the next step is. But as you go through the divine unfoldment, things will be suggested to you on what to do to move you closer to your goal. Everything is about momentum. You know, it doesn't just happen, although it can. Anything is possible. All possibilities, all potentialities, all probabilities exist now. But usually it's steps, you know, inch by inch, it's a cinch, you know. Remember the little engine that could? I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I believe I can. I believe I can. I know I can. I know I can. I did that. It's sort of like that. So you'll be given, um, you know, instructions or steps to take. And then as you get closer, it just becomes like solving a puzzle. Just make it a game. And you have fun with it. It becomes simpler and simpler. It becomes more realistic and more realistic for you. That's the way it works. So then the third step basically is the repetition or reiteration, right? And then the fourth piece is basically letting go, like detach. You know, say, hey, I'm cool if this happens. I'm cool if it doesn't happen. 
So that increases the likelihood of the thing happening for you. And it's that simple. Uh, it's going to be easier for you if you make it a game and you make it fun and you go on the hunt or it's like, you know, you're trying to solve a crossword puzzle or you now you have to scramble letters and you circle the words um, or you just putting your puzzle together. That's in symbology that that's what it is. Right. So the main thing that is has to be the, the prerequisites is right. You got to think about what you want. Right. And the tools that you use, you know, um, I'm a reader. So, you know, affirmations work for me. You know, visualization, visualization can work, too. So these are tools. But remember that you're the source. You're the power source. Uh, you have the creative magnetic energy power. You have the stored energy, you know. So the tools of visualization uh, imaginal acts, scripting, journaling, affirmations, mirror work, um, practicing the silence. These are just tools and resources to create the environment to get you into the mental state, the uh, space of grace, so that your manifestation can come in. It's not the end all be all, nothing's cast in stone. If you do this, this, that, and the other will happen. If you don't do this, this, that, and the other won't happen. It's not like that. You make the rules, it's your game. You make the rules, you make the rules, you make the rules. All of these things mentioned, these resources are just to help you remember and to put you in the mental state so that your manifestation can come in permanently, you know, and you're supposed to make it fun. You make your own rules because how somebody else manifests may not be how you manifest, but you are always manifesting. We're just trying to get you to shift, pivot, change direction and start manifesting all the time what it is that you truly desire, you know, um, being able to set your heart's intention and not letting your mind go to, oh, you can't have that. You don't deserve that. You're not worthy of that. You're not good enough. You know, all that garbage. This is a way to bypass that. When you practice it routinely, just like you wash your face, you brush your teeth, uh, you take a bath or you take a shower. It's got to become a part of you. It's got to be natural. It's got to be normal. This is how you manifest it. This is, this is it, right? There's nothing wrong with you. And it's supposed to be a light touch. You know, there's rigidity, which is force. And there's fluidity, that's flow. You know, you want to be in flow. You just want to do things as it pops up or as you think about it. You don't want to force anything because you can't force anything. It's the subconscious that's performing it anyway. You're just an active participant in it. You know what I'm saying? Once something is basically known to be important to you, the reticular activating system, which is kind of like the secretary or, uh, you know, the clerical person for your subconscious begins to send that message that this person wants this thing. This person wants this thing. This person really wants this thing. And the subconscious, the prover, it goes and searches for ways to bring it into existence. So it's all through flow, right? Time, space, repetition. Uh, emotion and just subconscious doesn't recognize time but it does recognize the repetition and the more you communicate that you want something the more it goes to work on bringing that something to you it doesn't matter what it is whether it's a relationship it's on the job a pay increase a promotion um, it's a certain kind of car a certain kind of outfit that doesn't matter because it's impersonal, it's deductive, it's accepting what you're telling it. It doesn't question you like the conscious mind. So it just goes to work to prove it and to bring it into existence for you. That's the best way that I can explain it. So step one is with crystal clearness, state what you want, right? And then start thinking and feeling and telling a story that's in alignment, that's agreement, that's congruent, that's in harmony with what you want right then it's repetition and reiteration 
and then it's the letting go. And letting go means you're not letting go of the desire. You're just, you know, detaching. You're not upset if you don't get it. You know what I'm saying? You don't go crazy like you need it definitely to happen. That increases the probability for it to happen for you. We've been live on Manifest with SI Power with your host, Dwight. Uh, talking about manifestation, I'm going to leave you with this quote from Henry David Thoreau. If one advances confidently in the directions of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which is imagined, he'll meet with success unexpected in common hours.